What's going on everyone? Chris Beans here with Bowler's Rant bringing you some information regarding the USB-C approval process and the ongoing saga of the Storm bowling ball hardness issue. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Okay, so late last week, Chad Murphy, executive director of the USB-C, released a letter to the general community, you know, bowler, bowlers, bowling companies, etc., outlining kind of a state of the union on where they're at with bowling ball uh, certification and an update on the issue and also released an FAQ. And I've got some questions regarding the content of that letter and some discrepancies I see between what they're saying and what exists, as well as some questions about the so-called data they released in that. So we're gonna go through all that. Uh, and you're gonna wanna make sure you come back to this video a couple times because there's a lot of content and we're gonna go through it. So let's jump in. Right off the bat in this letter, which I'm not gonna read every single piece of this because that would be egregiously long, just as long as this letter is. I find it to be very long. They're saying that, hey, we're going to talk, take a few minutes to touch basis on the stuff that we've been talking about, and here's an FAQ. Cool, we'll go through that. And they're saying, hey, it's been a rough ride, and this is unhealthy, excuse me, unexpected and disruptive. Timing's never good. Speculation rumors are challenging, and everybody's impatient, wants more information. Okay, cool. You know, everybody's concerned. And they're saying, you know, enforcement's not simple, and effective governance is not a popularity contest, so they're claiming to be neutral. And they're saying it's a membership organization and we celebrate our members' right to be critical. Damn right. We are critical. And they're saying, you know, hey, USBC members demand governance of the sport. Well, we also demand governance of the USBC. We demand governance of the governing body that is doing the governance. Say that five times fast, which means we'd like to see a little bit more transparency because we're questioning the integrity of the, uh, in, of the of this approval process. Because if the process is so good, then why is the PBA's data different than the USB-C? PBA tested these balls, said everything's fine. Okay, so there's there's some questions there, right? And they're saying without governance, quality governance, chaos would assume. Well, we have chaos anyways. That's why we're having this discussion. And that's why we've got a problem, okay? So some of the arguments, they're already saying right off the bat, they're defensive arguments, and that's not a, a position of offense. That's a position of defense, and I smell blood in the water, Okay. And there, there's some stuff about history here. We've got people who've been working with us and they gave us a baseline for what we have to today, blah, blah, blah. And then they're, they're going, there's where the interesting part comes in. They're saying governance of bowling balls is built on trust. We depend on partners to make the products with agreed upon specifications, then verify a series of checks to confirm. That trust only comes with only asking for two sample balls for USB-C approval. They're saying it's only two balls. Well, I'm calling shenanigans on that because in their certification manual that, they specif that they're that they re referencing, if you scroll down here from the section starting on page 10 to page 11, if you have a ball that has is outside of the required metric for coefficient of friction, coefficient of restitution, radius of gyration, this is the important one, for example, if you have a ball that is right down here, Within 050 to 061, so eight additional balls must be submitted if you're between 050 and 061, right? And this is for new core designs, right? New core designs, if your differential is between 050 and 061, you got to do eight additional balls. Well, I have an example of a ball like that because the new core design, that would be the Spectre, 255051. So it's more than two bowling balls, it's 10 bowling balls. And I'm just pointing this out that this is an area where I see a difference between what is in the manual and what Chad Murphy is saying right here, okay? And they're saying they're trying to keep the cost down, right? And they're saying that there's 300 balls per year and that they only have five people. So another defensive argument. What they're basically saying is we don't have enough people to do what we need to do if we wanted to do approval process. Well, I'm calling shenanigans on that too. Now I'm gonna show some fuzzy math here. And the reason I'm saying fuzzy is because it's not a it's a flat analysis, it's not a deeper analysis if you think about, you know, people's salaries and other activities, but here it is. And this this is kind of meant to be tongue in cheek because if you look at the FAQ, which was announced, and if you scroll all the way down, you'll notice a very similar table. I'm calling shenanigans on this being a flat analysis, and this is a summary, not real data. So I'm making fun of myself while making a point by showing this data. If you've got five staff members and you've got 300 balls per year, that's 60 balls per staff member, okay? And that means it's five balls, it's five hours to approve a bowling ball. That's in the certification uh, manual. So five hours per ball, that's 300 hours per year per staff member, okay? You've got, 
if you do the math, there's 40 hours in a week. Multiply that times 52. There's the formula in case anybody was confused. That's 2,080 available working hours per year. So if you subtract the 300 hours from 2,080, that leaves 1,780 hours, which means unused hours in days is 74 unused business days, which means if you mul you know multiply that times five, because that's a business week, that means 14 weeks out of the year, out of the 26 available, no one's doing stuff or they're doing stuff that's not related to approving bowling balls. So I'm also calling shenanigans that they don't have enough people. Otherwise, their process is simply not very good. And, you know, if they need more people, maybe Chad Murphy can take some of that $354,000 that he makes per year and hire somebody else. Just saying. And so they say, yep, they trust the manufacturers do that do their best and that, you know, they're making, a, you know, some information here that, you know, someone argued it's okay if balls were built below USBC specifications could be used in our highest competitions because the tournament started without a product use and needs to be completed that way. I would actually argue that's very true. If you start it on a Monday and then Tuesday you make an announcement, that's really, really bad. It, very bad optics. But they're saying they have the appropriate, you know, authority to do all that stuff, right? So anyways... They're saying basically if they find out that the ball is out of specification, they can just pull it. Okay, cool. No big deal. They're also saying that nobody used an illegal ball on purpose, so the conspiracies are unfounded, etc. And here, now here's another defensive argument. While in, while difficult, some used to be, uh, some folks say, I don't get anything from my membership. Well, here they're saying the USBC is delivering the purest value to our members by enforcing equipment specifications stated in our manuals. Well, <laughs> You're claiming stuff about your manuals and your manuals say something else. So I'm questioning if you, if anybody really knows what they're talking about here. They probably do. I'm just a little bit frazzled by the fact that we're even having to go through all this. We, the USBC bowlers, are not happy with it. But they're saying they're acting with the balance to protecting the integrity of USBC national tournaments. Well, there's also the rest of bowling because this is the sport of bowling while the rest of us in leagues are doing the game of bowling. What are you doing for us leagues when you're talking about the integrity of national tournaments? Mostly... I don't know if anybody can hear my dog in the background. Sorry about that. Most of the time, us members who buy the bowling balls we see on TV are trying to use them in local leagues and regular tournaments. So there's a whole bunch of other stuff here around here, and there's some stats, but they're telling us to be brave. Well, we are being brave. We're speaking up about it.